This video is a short extract from our course on concrete construction cost estimating. In our full course, we go into everything that's required to accurately calculate the cost of concrete construction works. From understanding the different methodologies, accurately measuring quantities, estimating productivities and more. The next quantity we need to calculate is the steel reinforcement. The rebar materials are expensive and the installation is time consuming. Both numbers will be driven by the total quantity of reinforcement in our structure. As with formwork, the type of structure will impact our steel fixing productivity rates. That's why it is important to break these down by structure type. Additionally, it will change how we estimate the overall quantities, which is also important. For steel fixing, we'll need to know the quantity of steel for slabs, piers, ground beams and mat foundations. For any reinforcement, the unit of measure will be the weight. The weight of steel is how we then estimate material and installation costs. The only exception will be for piers and columns where pre-fabricated ages are used. For these, we'll need to know the number of piers. Other quantities will be the number of dowels for any construction joints, any supports or bar chairs and any on-site welding that is required. There are two methods we can use to estimate the weight of steel reinforcement in a structure. We can use the ratio method, which is easier, but less accurate, or calculate the volume of steel, which is more effort, but also more accurate. For the ratio method, depending on the type of structure, we'll use standard ratios of kilograms of steel per cubic meter of concrete. We then multiply this by the volume of concrete to get the quantity of steel. For the volume method, we determine the number and type of rebar from the drawings, calculate a volume per meter, and then multiply this by the length of the bars. This is more accurate, but a lot more time consuming. We'll do an example using both these methods for the same wall we looked at to calculate the formwork quantities. Using the ratio method, we first need to choose the ratios we need. You can get these from the guidebook I've attached to the course notes. These are some general, broad figures for typical reinforced concrete elements. For walls, we'll use 100 kilograms per cubic meter, and for slabs, we'll use 125 kilograms per cubic meter. Then, we calculate the volumes of concrete in each structure. For the wall, it's 30 meters long, 2 meters high, and 250 mil wide. This gives us 15 cubic meters. For the slab, it's 30 meters long, 2 meters wide, and 400 mil deep. This gives us 24 cubic meters. We then multiply the quantity by the rate. For the wall, it's 15 cubic meters by 100 kilograms per cubic meter, which gives us 1500 kilograms. For the slab, it's 24 cubic meters by 125 kilograms per cubic meter, which gives us 3000 kilograms. As you can see, the ratio method is incredibly quick and easy. Next, let's try the next method, where we calculate the specific quantities for these slabs. The basic method to follow is step one, extracting details. From the reinforcement drawings or bar bending schedules, extract the number, diameter, and length of each type of reinforcing bar. Step two, calculate the weight of individual bars. The weight of a reinforcing bar is length by diameter by pi divided by four by the density of steel. This is approximately 7,850 kilograms per cubic meter. For standard reinforcing bars, tables are available for various bar diameters. These tables can speed up the quantification process. Step three is to multiply the weight of each bar by the number of bars of that type to get the total weight of steel. We need to sum the quantities of all types of bars to get the total quantity of reinforcement. Let's try this method and start by looking at the drawings. The first thing we need to understand is how to get the steel detail from the drawing. The notation N12200 refers to steel reinforcement bar detailing and spacing. N. This might denote the type or grade of the rebar. In some standards, N is used to denote normal ductility, reinforcing bars. The exact definition or grade can vary depending on the specific standard or region. 12. This refers to the diameter of the rebar in millimetres, so the rebar diameter would be 12 mil. 200. This indicates the centre-to-centre -center spacing of the bars in millimetres. In this case, it would mean the rebars are placed 200 millimetres apart from each other. We are also missing the horizontal bar spacing from this detail. We will assume that horizontal bars are placed at 200mm centre to centre and are also N12. We also need to note the lap length which is 400mm. We are going to use this information to work out the weight of steel in one metre of this structure. So for an N12 bar, we are going to calculate the weight per metre. Using the formula length by diameter squared by pi divided by 4 by the weight of steel per cubic metre, we get 0.88 kilograms per metre of N12 bar. We then need to calculate the length of N12 bar in one meter of this structure. Assuming the 200 millimeter horizontal spacing in the slab, horizontally due to the 200 millimeter spacing, horizontally we have five bars top and bottom each 2.4 meters long. They are 2.4 meters long because we have to factor in the 400 millimeter lap length, which gives us 24 meters. Then running parallel to the slab at 200 millimeter spacing, we will have 10 bars top and bottom to cover the full two meter width. This will also give us 20 meters. This totals up to 44 meters of rebar per meter of the slab. 
For the wall, we will have five 2.5 meter bars running vertically on each side, which gives us 25 meters. And then running the length of the structure, we will have 14 bars along each side, giving us 28 meters. Therefore, for the wall, we have 53 meters of rebar per meter. Totaling this up for the structure, we add the length of rebar per meter for the wall and slab to get 97 meters. We then multiply this by the weight per meter of N12 bar to get 85.3 kilograms per meter of the structure. Then, the total for the structure will be 30 by 85.3, which is 2,560 kilograms of steel. As you can see, this number is a lot lower than the estimate we made using the standard rules. That's because if we use the ratio method, the numbers tend to be more conservative. However, it took us a lot longer to calculate the exact values. Regardless of what method we use, we can then use these accurate quantities to estimate our material and labor costs.